Brent Fikowski, uh, 14.2, Canada West. Brent Fikowski, open workout, 14.4. Brent Fikowski, 14.5. Brent Fikowski, 15.1. Brent Fikowski. Brent Fikowski. Brent Fikowski, Canada West, 15.5. Hi, Brent Fikowski, 16.3. Brent Fikowski, 16.4. Four. Brent Fikowski, Brent Fikowski, Canada West, Fikowski, Canada West, 17.5. Fikowski, Canada West, 18.1. Regular pull-up bar. Brent Fikowski, Canada West, 18.2, 18.2A, 50 pounds, and we'll show the we'll show the barbell after. I don't know, nothing on my hands. Let's do it. Uh, second workout of the Open here, announced yesterday, as you probably already know. Not my dream workout, but should be fun. Uh, a bunch of fast burpees, a bunch of fast squats, and then in the remaining time, I've got to establish a one rep max clean, heavy weight to the shoulder. Um, yeah. Just uh, get it done here, get my score in by Monday, keep racking up points, and qualify again for regionals. Mentally I was there, but then physically, I definitely thought once or twice about my, my peers who were hitting, you know, big numbers and thinking like, you're not even going to be close to those guys that, you know, you're, you were better than in, you know, in July. Um, so, uh, I mean, the two guys that came 1-2 were uh, Mitch Bernard and Joe Scally. Um, they were the top two in the Open in Canada West this year. Two buddies of mine that go back since I started CrossFit here in Western Canada. And they were also part of the, uh, the Trash Talk Thursday group, the, uh, the Open Humiliation group. Brent Fikowski here, uh, getting ready for the CrossFit Open. We've got an exciting year ahead of year for the uh, Open Humiliation Trash Talk Thursday. So my Open Humiliation bet. One of, the, one of the weeks I had the worst score amongst the boys, so I had to uh, eat a tablespoon of wasabi. Uh, here's my open humiliation for having the weakest deadlift of the bunch. Bottoms up. <coughs> oh. <laughs> next, next week, there's a cake to the face. And you jumped in water. What's happening right now? Oh, there we go. Brenty. <laughs> Mitchell, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm hanging out with your, your best buddy, the Scalzone. <laughs> We're shooting a documentary about you right now. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. And the, the theory of the documentary is, will Brent make it to the CrossFit Games after his terrible <laughs> open performance? <laughs> he's, he's, he's sweating right now. He drank some Xavier. Yeah, I need it. Plug for Xavier. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, so so this is it. We just wanted to call and say hello. Hey. Hey, Brent. Miss you. I love you. Um, so the first workout rolled out. Probably won. he won. <laughs> um, it was a Joe and Brent workout. Long, aerobic base. Um, 
you know, they both have decently sized hands, so the grip on the toes would be fine. Big hands, um, you know what that means. Yeah, big, big gloves. gloves. That's, right. Yeah, that's right. PG, it, keep it PG here. And it went kind of how we all thought. Joe won, um, Brent did well. Brent didn't redo it because he was still in the mindset of, I'm going to qualify no matter what anyways, so he didn't redo it. A couple people redid it and beat him. Um, so that was fine. Still, like, top three, I think. Um, 18.2 comes out, 18.2A. Short. Arguably the, the worst possible workout, workout you for Brent Ficasso. For a tall athlete to do squats and yeah. then And a slow bar. athlete. And a weak athlete. Yeah. And an ugly so athlete. Better. Legitimately, oh. the workout came out and he was like, oh, I'll be fine. I know. <laughs> and we were all like, like oh. no, bro, you're not going to be fine. You're not going to be fine. And then he wasn't fine. Oh, he wasn't man. fine. He came last out of our little crew. And, he, and that's when we were like, you know, if things mm. go really poorly for Brent. He was sitting on eighth after yeah, that, ninth yeah. or something. He was outside the top five. So then all the banter goes on, the bubble boy and all this yeah. nonsense. And, you know, we're like, eh, the workouts yeah. don't turn out so awesome for him. He might be on the I bubble. I remember getting a text from Mitch saying, you know, Brent's f Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Beep, beep, beep. Beep. So CrossFit as a sport um, is becoming much more difficult to compete at the highest level. I think guys that were at the top, top, top of our sport, you know, three years ago, you see a lot of them now struggling to make it to regionals, especially if they had big commitments outside of the sport. Like, um, you have guys like Brent who, you know, gained an edge and forced all of us to take the sport a lot more seriously and in a more professional capacity um, by analyzing workouts and really breaking it down and coming at it in such an analytical way that it kind of forced the sport to evolve. And, you know, now even that might not be enough. You know, a guy like Brent Fikowski who used to be able to, you know, if he got 1% better every year, and he outthought all of us. You know, he would climb and climb and climb to you know second place. We're now looking at him barely making regionals. Um, it being a question of whether he makes the games. Um, it being an even bigger question of if he makes the games, could he ever beat Matt Frazier? The quality of CrossFit is is climbing, um, and it's going to become more and more professional. And it's going to be very interesting to see where it ends up. And uncoil. Those are the logos, and these are humans that work for the companies. Pretty big part of my, my MO, my identity, the last couple of years has been that I've been this really good CrossFit athlete that's also held a full-time job as an accountant for a private company. And I've been really proud of that, that I've been able to do those two things. And this year I decided finally to, to make a change to that. As I was spreading myself too thin, I had, you know, increasing amounts of responsibility both at work and as a competitive athlete but also responsibilities to the sponsors that I'm working with and wanting to make sure that I'm giving them the attention that they deserve and also to the, my relationship with Claire even before CrossFit trying to balance all these things and do all these things and have your hand in all these pies and maybe this is the moment that you've been working towards is you have this ability now to take a step back, eliminate your responsibilities, and sort of enjoy the experiences you're being given. And so with that in mind, I decided to, I uh, made the hard decision to eliminate um, a lot of my working hours at my job. It's never good seeing your name, you know, fall down the leaderboard, especially when you're that high and you're, um, you know, on the first page is kind of what people, that's the top 50. So slipping off that top page, and I probably won't be on the top page after this week either. Which again, you know, a little frustrating, but hopefully I can climb my way back up. And then if I don't, um, it's a good opportunity to remind myself it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you gotta, that's not, that's not why we do this sport. It's not for the open, it's for the games. Yeah, it's like realistically you couldn't win the open because there's like too many workouts that's like just better if you're like, really sure. strong or like short so like those movements take like that little bit less time crossfit, crossfit favors shorter athletes 100 percent brent is in a disadvantage every time that he goes and competes in a crossfit event just by either the distance he has to lift that bar even if you think of a muscle up i mean he's got more weight than almost every single one of these athletes that are going out there too so there, there are the odd events that he is going to have an advantage because of his height but i think in all it's much harder as somebody who's six foot three and 220, however much he weighs now. It's much harder for them uh, versus somebody who's five foot eight and under 200 pounds. That, that's just a fact, I think, of CrossFit right now. As I got into high school, um, 
really f- started to fall in love with the sport of volleyball and developed, you know, a really good friendship with my best friend, uh, Andy Hemmerling. People would refer to us as, uh, as Brandy because we sort of did everything together, whether that was, you know, go to some party or uh, obviously playing volleyball together, we were sort of inseparable, so. Right, back down to ground level. All right, first bite. Yeah, oh my God. As luck would have it, two girls I knew showed up. Brent and I altered it and we did it. Shut up, sing it. There's bars, but keep us together. This one I don't have a terrace of bars. Hey guys, it's good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Yeah, it's good to see you. Come on in. Yeah. How's it going, Russ? Andy, nice good to see you. See you. you bet. Hey, how are you? Oh, good, how are you? Good to see you. I know definitely now, if somebody knows myself, the, one of the first stories at the last kick, oh, you went to Australia with that Brent Fikowski guy. And then they go on to Brent Fikowski, who they obviously know through the CrossFit world. We'd I mean, probably yeah. know more than us, because for us, it would just be our friends and our friends if they see us, oh boy, Brent's doing well. It's actually staggering how many people know about it, mm-hmm. or at least say like, wow, Brent got in really good shape. So they might not even know he's like a CrossFit, like good at CrossFit. They might just think he got in really good shape and posts about it online. <laughs> so I don't know if they, I don't know if they know he's actually doing this for competition or if it's just for show, <laughs> just for the beach body. <laughs> In that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's so tall. Good, you. Good. Your place looks awesome. Yeah. How was the trip? It was Come good. On. Hi, honey. Love you. Love you too. Good to see you. Good to see you, Dad. Thank you. Old timer. <laughs> yeah, old timer. <laughs> got my got my dumbbells. Yes, I got your dumbbells. Yeah, right. that, you yeah. pack them out because I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> the one time deal. They're pretty deal. heavy. Yeah, they're pretty yeah. heavy. So here it is, it's hey. Great. That's it. <laughs> you pack it out of there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not touching it. Yeah, well, it was. Yeah, the old 120, and she she said she knew me, eh? Oh yeah, she was quite excited that uh, this was going to you. <sighs> but yeah, packed a long ways to come <laughs> come well, right, we'll, right across the country. We'll grab the other you one. Get the, I'm, yeah, I'll let you grab yeah, it. Yeah, Where right. he ends up and yeah. whatever happens doesn't uh, doesn't matter. That's yeah. not the That's not what the. We've always thing. said, right? Mm-hmm. It's always been do your best. Yeah. And have fun. Yeah, just yeah. focus on what you do, and if you're f- yeah. proud of it at the end of it. Yeah, I just am so proud of him. What have you expected it when he was little for for Brent to for him to get to that point? I think I can expect Brent to just about do anything he wants to do. I'm proud of him for a reason. Like I know what he does every day to accomplish what he accomplishes. I know how hard he works. I know all the things he sacrifices. So when he accomplishes what he does, like, I'm not surprised, I'm just proud, because he deserves it. And with no gym equipment uh, anywhere near the farm, he had to improvise, so he was lifting uh, jugs of, uh, like, oil or hydraulic fluid. Needed to, wanted to do some ring um, handstands or push-ups, whatever, and so his uncle hoisted up the the uh, front-end loader, you know, uh, attached the ropes to that, and Brent was, uh, doing the ring muscle-ups that he would take it as far as he has today to be one of the one of the best in the world that's quite something to see the, the progress from that time to to where he is, is and now. one of the reasons he had difficulty with that was because that one move ring muscle the ring muscle up he could not do the ring muscle up and he was just learning to do it and he he was trying to he struggled with it and it was just like heartbreaking but after yeah. that, it was just like, but it was so neat to yeah. see him compete in all of it and to do so well. And it was just the one move that he had difficulty with, but.
pounds. Oh, that was great, man. Here's to another week of having slightly fitter friends uh, than myself. Uh, keep the toque on to stay warm. Got my pie, got my ducks, ready? Okay, here we go. Oh. This was my sixth CrossFit Open and it was definitely the most stressful. Uh, the two years prior have been pretty low stress. I was able to just, you know, do my best, do the workout once, kind of move on. And that was pretty much the case for most years I've been in the Open. Uh, this year, it was, uh, yeah, it was a little bit of a roller coaster emotionally, trying to uh, make sure I had a score that was going to keep me in the mix for that top five spots and just a lot of other stuff going on um, with my own training and just some personal stuff around home. We just moved houses and we, uh, you know, our car had broken down so we had to buy another car. It was just like bad timing and not great performances and workouts weren't really in my wheelhouse. A lot of a workouts that, uh, you know, I wouldn't program for myself if I wanted to win a competition, to be frank, but, you know, still learn from them and I think definitely came out the other side uh, smarter and stronger. I think that I was due for a bit of adversity. Uh, the last two years I haven't had much adversity in the sport. I've just been able to do my best and good things have happened and this year got a little bit of a slap in the face and a reminder that uh, you know it's, it's hard work and that uh, people are gunning for that, that top spot. Hey Doc. Hey Brent. Good hey, to see you today. Yeah good to see you man. How's it going? Good. Good. Yeah, good, man. One of the things that really impressed me when we first sat down a few years ago is you, you live your life based on a set of values, which is important. And the growth mindset thing that you, you are always pursuing is you can't go wrong because even if, you, even if you do do something wrong, you transition from that into the next thing when, when you're continually growing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then being adaptable. Like most people don't know that Brent... I don't think most people know that Brent broke his toe during the Open, but he didn't really make excuses because he's, he's an adaptable guy. He, in the last workout, he was like about to die from a cold and he didn't, he didn't make excuses. And everyone's calling him out and saying, oh, you know, he lost the magic. But if you're an adaptable human being and, and you're not someone who tends to, you take responsibility as a leader, which I think he does, then you don't make excuses. You just power through, and and you, to be the best, that's what you got to do. So I think his mindset is is probably one of the strongest things that he possesses. Thanks, Dr. Mike. <laughs> it's just the truth. People got to know. <laughs> it's not a panic. You don't want to panic yet, but it's definitely an eyebrow raiser. Is that Brett Fakowski right now? Remember, Canada West only sends five people to regionals is in eighth place. He's on the outside looking in. Yes, that's not good. Okay, there's my, there's my professional <laughs> yeah. analysis of that. I mean, if you're in the conversation to be one of the best of the world, you don't ever want to be on any week after any workout on the outside looking in. It's really easy to claim you're mentally tough when everything's going well and you're winning, but it's not. So I have to reframe this as an opportunity to, to test my mental strength and to focus on just doing my best and trusting that that'll be enough. And I think that that is what makes him as good as he is. Like, I, he, I don't think he's naturally as built to be an excellent crossfitter, um, but he makes up for that by using his brain. He has a bigger brain and, than most people who are doing what we're doing. Um, you know, a really good example of that is you, you talk to somebody that's stepping, about to step out on the regional floor um, and you go, okay, well, how are you gonna break up the handstand push? And they go, ah, you know, I might break it up like, however like I feel and you go Brent how are you gonna break it up he's like 
I'm gonna do five sets of three with four seconds of rest because I tested this five times and that's the fastest that I can possibly do it. And then you have a stopwatch and you watch him do it and he does exactly what he says he's gonna do no matter what's happening around him. I care a lot about what's happening around me and like I hate to lose so much that I'll blow myself up yeah. to try you to take someone next to me for no reason to come second instead of first. On yeah. paper, this guy is okay. way better than Fikowski. On paper, you put Fikowski, you put Mitch <laughs> Bernard here. Like, oh, if I was going to choose a team just based on this paper, I would say, oh, Mitch Bernard, you're on my team, yeah. right? But if I knew his mental game, I would take Brent. Yeah. Hopefully he worked on it. Because yeah. this guy is the fittest guy I know, and a lot of people say this, the fittest guy that's never, never made the CrossFit Games, right? Yeah, he, he takes a different view of it all, and it's exceptional what he's been able to do. A lot of people want to know where the nickname The Professor came from, and a lot of people think it's because of my analytical nature and how I break down you know, this CrossFit as a sport. That stems from my ability to be mentally tough and know myself. Like That's the tip of the iceberg, and that's what people see first, but that comes from my mental toughness, and I think it's what really sets me apart and makes me me, and when there's all these, all this noise, around me, I try to block it out and I try to focus on my own performance and find enjoyment in focusing purely on what I can do. So this is it, it's the last workout of the Open. 18.5, uh, should, should be a doozy. Uh, thrusters and chest bars. The plan is to go out fast, but not too fast. <laughs> if I nail this, home stretch, and then, uh, and then just training for regionals. So um, yeah, it's gonna really, really hurt. All right, let's do it. Go. Go. So an hour and a half ago, I got a call from Mitch Barnard. He said, uh, get yourself to the gym. Uh, we got a problem. I don't think your score is gonna be good enough to uh, stay in the top five and qualify for regionals. So I got to the gym, read it 18.5. It was terrible, just as terrible, but I was able to squeeze out just a couple more reps, submitted the score just before the deadline, and looks good. We made it, fifth place, Western Canada. We're going to regionals, coming to San Diego. See you guys soon. Cali, baby, see you there. Do what you need to do.
move to get the best possible time. Myself and to the crowd and to my competitors, but uh, you know, the final day is mine and this is, this is my region. Again, Jason Kelly with the Bulls the road. <laughs> <laughs> Fruit toys. Did you, oh, did you record that? Oh, yeah.